This video is a continuation of our lectures on epithelial tissues, and now we're down to our last two epithelial tissues that are somewhat irregular and they don't necessarily follow the pattern that we saw in our previous epithelial tissues. So up here we have our simple squamous epithelial tissues, our simple cuboidal, our simple columnar, our stratified squamous, and stratified cuboidal, and you can see that we've got these two left. This video is going to take a look at pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Before we move on to take a look at this specific tissue, let's define epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are going to border the outside world and protect your insides from the outside environment. So, with our pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, our outside environment is going to be the air. So let's take a look at our tissue. Our pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium ends at this red line, and so this portion here is our tissue, and this lumen is going to be the air that we breathe in and out. So this is a cross-section of your trachea, which in layman's terms is your windpipe. Before we get down to the details, let's take a look at this name because it's a little bit different from the names that we've come across before. So pseudostratified. Pseudo means false. Stratified means layered. So pseudostratified epithelia is going to look like it has multiple layers, but that is an illusion. So every single cell is actually going to be in contact with the basement membrane or your basal lamina, but it's going to look like it has many layers. So we're going to look like we've got multiple layers of cells, but in reality we only have one layer of cells. If we take a look at our picture, we can see that quite clearly. So here's our basement membrane and going up from our basement membrane, we have multiple layers of nuclei. Sometimes we even have three or four layers of nuclei before we get up to our apical surface. But in actuality, all of these cells are contacting the basement membrane. They just squash each other out to the side so that they can touch the basement membrane. So it causes our nuclei to have this squished, sort of layered appearance. What does ciliated mean? Well, in this word you should see the word cilia. So what that means is that this epithelium has cilia on our apical surface. And to me, these cilia look like little hairs sticking up on our apical surface, so it makes our tissue look fuzzy. And I like to think of those cilia as these funny little hairs that stick up off of our apical surface. Next we have columnar, and in a columnar epithelium our cells are tall and thin so that they look like a rectangle. And here, we normally think of columnar cells looking like that, but in our pseudostratified, they're going to be funny shaped with their nuclei all squashed together so that all of our cells can have contact with our basement membrane. And then finally, epithelium means that we are bordering an outside environment 
or an internal space. Now let's take a look at our tissue in specific. So I already kind of gave you a description of our cells. They are going to be columnar, but they are going to be squashed together so that our nuclei are forced into different layers. And then we also have those cilia, so our apical surface is going to look hairy. So I told you that we are looking at a cross-section of your trachea, and the trachea is a portion of your respiratory tract, and it's a portion that we call your upper respiratory tract. And in our upper respiratory tract, we have our nasal cavities, our trachea, and our bronchi. So if you want to say upper respiratory tract for location, that works great. But if you want to be more specific and specify your nasal cavities, your trachea, or your bronchi, that is also acceptable. For our function, we need to turn to our goblet cells, which I don't happen to have any in this picture, but we do see goblet cells um, in pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And what are goblet cells? Do you guys remember? Goblet cells are going to secrete mucus. So one function of our pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium is to secrete mucus. This mucus is going to trap any bacteria or foreign particles that you breathe into your body from the outside environment. Once those particles are trapped in the mucus, our cilia come into play and our cilia are going to move the mucus in one direction across the membrane, creating something called a mucus elevator. Isn't that a great name? So we are going to be moving mucus from the lower portions of our respiratory tract up our trachea or down our nasal cavities to our mouth so that we can swallow that mucus and then have our stomach acid neutralize any danger to our body of those foreign particles. Okay, so in this picture we're pointing out that we have multiple layers of nuclei. So we see again our multiple layers of nuclei. We have our cilia sticking up, looking hairy, and we've got sort of these jumbled rows that makes our um, epithelium appear stratified when actually it's not. And if we take a look at the right hand picture, we can see the exact same characteristics even though this picture looks really different from our previous one. So again we have these multiple rows of nuclei and in this picture you can kind of see our cell outlines so you can see that these cells are connected to the basement membrane which is really kind of cool. And then we have a nice view of our cilia up top looking like little hairies sticking up off the top of our cell. So I really like this picture on the right. I think it's a great one. And one more picture to nail at home. Again, we have multiple layers of nuclei. We have our cilia sticking up on top. And then here, this picture shows us goblet cells. And these goblet cells are secreting mucus onto our apical surface so that our cilia can move our mucus in one direction across the membrane. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.